Here we are out at a lake in Latvia today. It's finally warmed up enough to get out and record again. So, today's question is, how is it possible that in many non-dual teachings, it is said that the world is seen as perfect after awakening? But how can that be with all the injustice and suffering that's going on? How do you explain this to someone who has lost someone or has a terminal illness or is in pain. Your question presents one of the great paradoxes. The answer to your question is beyond the intellect's ability to understand. But let's make an attempt at it anyway. I will do my best to answer this from my own experiences rather than to give you an intellectual answer, or to answer this question based on the experiences of others. Although, in quotes, my experiences may be very similar to those of others. Just keep in mind that the words can never completely answer your question, they could, but they can offer you some breadcrumbs so that you can experience the answers yourself. Listen to these words with an open heart. The answers you are looking for are in between the words and will be found in the experiences you have in listening with your heart rather than with your mind. Let's begin with this. All that is is what it is. It is neither perfect nor imperfect. It just is. Sit with that for a few minutes and contemplate it. Now let's discuss the appearances of suffering, injustice, pain, illness, hate, fear, anger, greed, and all the other shadows in the world. From the perspective of the infinite ocean of consciousness, the true self, these appearances are real and unreal at the same time. They are appearings in an infinite hologram, an infinite movie, they have no real value other than the experience of them. Contemplate the following or use it as a meditation. Imagine that you are not an individual personality in this infinite movie. You are the entire infinite ocean of consciousness. You are infinite awareness itself that is being the entire movie. You have no mind, will, control, or life of your own. You are the observing, not the observer. The entire movie is within you, within awareness. There is a creator creating all that is, constantly. The creator is aware of itself. You are this awareness. The creator is the only mind. It is alone and only. There is only one. Once you have dissolved into the infinite ocean of consciousness that you are, you will experience some of the attributes of the Creator. There are no words that even come close to describing these attributes, but we do our best to use some anyway. Words like infinite bliss, love, peace, compassion, power, creativity, boundless energy, are only signposts to the real experiences of these attributes. The only way to experience these attributes is to dissolve into the infinite sea of consciousness, the infinite mind of the Creator, the true self. All of these attributes are neither good nor evil. They are neither desirable nor not desirable. They are far, far beyond any human judgments, but they do set the tone for creation. 
When we experience the true self, awakening, enlightenment, we recognize that we are the infinite expression of these attributes. We are infinite compassion, love, peace, understanding, power, creativity. <clears throat> we do not possess them. We are them. When we see suffering in the world, in the movie, we see it first without judgment, without investment, and without reaction. Then, if appropriate, we act as the expression of the Creator's compassion, strength, creativity, love, and power. We do not judge what is compassionate or loving or creative. We just act authentically as the true self, if we are inspired to do so. From a human perspective, when we be and live as the true self in physical form, we appear to radiate these attributes. This is not something to strive for or to desire. It is just a natural consequence of living the true self authentically. We do not uh, deny the appearances of good and evil, right and wrong, life and death, health and illness. We see the appearances of dualism honestly and clearly. To deny their existence would be foolish indeed. But we only act when inspired to do so. And if we act, we act authentically as the true self. So for instance, someone comes to you and describes their pain at the loss of a loved one. You recognize and acknowledge their experience. They are experiencing this pain as absolutely real and overwhelming. You feel it as much as they do. You recognize that they are an image and an experience within the awareness that you are. They're not separate from you. Their experiences are not separate from you. You embrace them in the infinite sea of awareness that you are. The infinite ocean that is beyond pain and pleasure, life and death. You listen you hear, you feel, and you embrace them in reality. If there arises something to say, you say it. If there arises something to do, you do it. You are the compassion, love, peace, power, creativity, and life of the Creator. This appearance of a person in pain is a part of who and what you are. They are not separate nor apart from you. In essence, they are you. They are another expression of who and what you are. You are the clear mirror for that aspect of the self. As an expression of infinite compassion and love, you would never do anything to harm them you would never say anything to cause them suffering. You would not deny their pain or sense of loss. You merely authentically be the infinite compassion and clear mirror that you are. You listen, you hear, you act if and when it is appropriate. I could go on and on and on describing all of this for days on end because your question is excellent and begs for a clear answer. I wish I could put all of this into the perfect words, but it is extremely difficult. I'll always do my best. Besides being your clear mirror, all I can do is do my best and try to improve my writing and expressing skills each time I answer a question like this. I will keep posting my feeble attempts to express the infinite in words. I do appreciate your question. For now, you can read more about this at lifesanswers.org, of course. And I, of course, I will keep answering your questions and keep posting these videos. And if you have any questions, other questions, just write to me. You can write to me through lifesanswers.org.
I hope this is helpful for you. For now, from Slokas Lake in Latvia, take care.